This is my client who presents with hypermobility syndrome throughout her body. And I want to uh, explain how hypomobility, a reduction of mobility, was part of what we found with our evaluation in three joints. And so even people who are hypermobile can get reduced motion in their joints where they become hypomobile and require very gentle mobilization. And the mobilization is very gentle and it's done for five minutes. So it's not an abrupt forceful manipulation. It's a very, very gentle coaxing. So I thought I would ask Tiffany to tell us about her experience here. Sure. Um, so when I first came to see Jerry, I was feeling uh, pain in my knee. And the only way I can really explain it is it felt a little bit locked or like my, my knee joint was being pulled. And I had been told in the past that it was because I had a tight IT band and that was pulling on my um, knee. And I mean, I've had this since for as long as I can remember, and it just felt locked, and a lot of times at night, it would feel um, pain, and I'd feel restless, and I would kind of like kick my leg to try to pop my knee to feel a sense of relief, and um, when I came here, Jerry did a test on my knees and my left knee. It was very easy to move around my patella, and on the right knee, <clears throat> it was interesting because it was hypo mobile meaning like it wasn't moving at all and I clearly could see that on the left side it was moving on the right side it was not um, and so as he mentioned he did um, a very slow and gentle manipulation hold for five minutes and then um, the joint immediately started moving and matched the motion of the other side and you're speaking of two movements at the knee and one was that the patella did not have glide left and right, right. but also when I pushed the femur backwards mm -hmm. it that that was also hypomobile yes, correct so um, I have been diagnosed with hypermobility so a lot of times when I like bend over to touch my toes my knee my like thighs will bend back but in the case of my right thigh that just wasn't happening when you were pushing on it very good and then we treated your shoulder Yes, so um, with my shoulder, uh, I work at a desk. I was in graduate school, so I was perpetually like this. And I also am very active, and I was taking boxing classes, and I started having burning in my shoulder cap and um, in this like clavicle area too. It just felt tight and like I was perpetually like hunched in like this. And um, I went to the doctor, I got an x-ray, and they told me that I had instability of my shoulder and some sublaxity. And um, I was in physical therapy, I got dry needling done, and um, some massage for myofascial release. And I just kind of felt like, okay, this was pain that I was probably just going to have to live with and deal with. And um, when you had done the test, I, it was, I think my right shoulder, or my left shoulder, excuse me, had bounced, but the right one was just kind of stuck. And the way that I explained how I felt when I first talked to Jerry was it felt like it was dislocated, but it wasn't. So I, I think it was just stuck. Um, and so with a slow manipulation, he like went under my scapula and then kind of held it for about five minutes. And it was remarkable that like yesterday, I felt like 95% better than I felt in the last two and a half years. And that was the acromioclavicular joint. Yep, so right where here. Where the clavicle, yep, where the so clavicle. I was getting pain here as well as right where the um, upper arm and the um, lower arm connect yeah. and ever since my adjustment yesterday the pain here has gone away wonderful and then lastly we found hypomobility up in the upper cervical at the atlas yep. the first cervical vertebrae yeah so I had a cervical MRI and everything seemed normal um, I didn't really know that there were any issues with my neck other than the fact that I felt compressed and I do get headaches very often and so I thought that I don't know the compression was just a from bad posture, but um, obviously it seemed like there was something stuck in there. And so with a couple um, gentle manipulations, um, feeling less compressed, um, still feeling like residualness from like a headache, but I think it's because I'm in Denver and the altitude is mm -hmm. a little different than what I'm used to, but um, otherwise I'm feeling a lot better than I was before I came. And are you confident with the self-treatment that we taught you? Yes. Very good. Yes. So. Uh, I think we've made a nice case for uh, the statement that hypo
home mobility, reduced movement in joints is relevant even in persons who are hypermobile because they get injuries, the joint absorbs the, uh, you know, the, the force of the injury and can become hypomobile in certain directions. Your knee had a little extra extension mm -hmm. and your knee had a little less flexion, but otherwise, you know, it had pretty fair amount of flexion extension, but it was the glide that the knee did not have. Mm -hmm. And uh, glide motion is a very small movement, but nonetheless physiological, very important. Yeah. So thank you. I think we've made a good uh, example of how hypomobility and hypermobility are, are both relevant. Yeah. Well, no, thank you. I'm looking forward to seeing what being physically active is like with a Without. mobile knee. Nice, nice. And the strengthening you're doing whole body is, of course, mm -hmm. very important, and I know you'll continue yeah. that. So thank you so much. I appreciate it.